Yeah. Is to one of the arrestees is a juvenile. The last time this high school freshman squared off with Spokane police, they arrested him for disorderly conduct. But today, the same officers who put the kid in handcuffs have invited him to join their quarterly tactical team training. I think you'll enjoy it, um, but be ready to push yourself because the training we go through uh, is not easy and is not basic. This 15-year-old, who we can't identify because of his age, had his run-in with police back on September 26th. That's when he was attending a protest in Spokane regarding the death of Breonna Taylor in Kentucky. You got one warning. That's all you're getting. Okay, well, you gave me at least two now. So I'm confused by that. Move off to the side. Move off to the side. The teen witnessed the arrest of this man who was allegedly blocking the path of bicycle officers escorting the marchers. And from my point of view, I couldn't, I, I didn't have an understanding why you, he arrested, you arrested that guy. The man was charged with obstructing police and taken into custody without incident. Mobile tool will be rolling back with bike. Corporal Darrell Quarles and his partner had returned to their rig when the kid pitched something at their patrol car. That made me upset and I got caught up in the moment and I picked up a piece of paper on the ground and I threw it at your car and I got arrested. Police explained their decision to arrest the team because they were concerned about other protesters following suit. Because then somebody sees it and well they're not doing it, let me try it. Well they're not doing it. So a piece of paper could turn into a rock, can turn into a brick and who knows. I mean it can just easily um, compound on and create bigger problems for us. Just so you know, we're not tolerating. You guys can march peacefully, but we're not tolerating crimes today. The teen's alleged crime was his first arrest, which allowed him to qualify for juvenile probation's diversion program. I'm going to extend this route a little bit, so we're going to make our way down to college. So instead of a conviction, the young man got community service. In this case, a day's worth of literally walking in the shoes of a police officer. So we are going to be going on a hike, and I think we're going to end up back at the station where we started. It was actually a seven-mile hike with a 35-pound backpack. The kid congratulated for completing the march without complaint. How far? All the way! How long? All day! But once back at the training center, team building turned into some tough love. Because these type of protests, people get caught up in the moment. As part of his diversion, this team then faced the entire TAC team to hear how his actions had made it tougher for police to keep this protest peaceful. When we start letting these acts of violence take place, whether it be against law enforcement, whether it be between the crowd, that can easily turn into now we have to do crowd control. Would you agree this is a more dangerous room than that room right there? And now that this young man has trained alongside the same officers who arrested him, he knows a little bit more about their tactics. I know that, well, these guys in particular definitely aren't looking for a fight, I don't think. Um, can't say the same for every cop out there, but I know these guys were, not, were totally neutral. He also knows that throwing anything at police can lead to other people pitching more dangerous objects. And that's why he was arrested, but thanks to the juvenile diversion program, given a chance to learn from his mistake. Jeff Humphrey, City Cable 5.